Hey guys, Mike Builds. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a new inverter to unbox. So let's get this thing cracked open. Oh yeah. Oh, that's nice. What we have here is a Sun Gold Power 48 volt, 5,000 watt, 120 volt, so single phase output, pure sine wave inverter, charge controller, all in one unit. But basically guys, I have a bunch of 48 volt battery content coming up and I needed a good compact 48 volt inverter in order to test the batteries. I also want to, in a future project, mount this to my golf cart to make a 48 volt portable solar power station that's mounted on the golf cart that has solar panels on it that I can use to run whatever I want. I think it'd be a really neat project, but I needed a nice compact and relatively affordable inverter to do so. So this unit it fit the bill perfectly. This is made by Sun Gold Power. It can do 5,000 watts of continuous output, 120 volt. It can take up to 5,500 watts of solar input at a voltage of 500 volts max open circuit. So that's really awesome. It makes it really easy to connect a bunch of solar panels to this unit. And it's also an AC charger. So you can actually connect this directly to the grid in order to charge your 48 volt batteries. So in this video, we're just gonna kind of go over some of the features of this thing. I'm gonna show you all how to hook it up and we're just gonna do a little bit of testing. And in a future video, we're gonna build a hand truck solar power system using this and a 40 volt battery and i'm going to try to make it as easy as possible so in the box you get the inverter itself you get this little serial cable you get this cable here you get an ethernet cord you get some random screws some big copper lug ring terminals as well as the manual itself so there's the model number it is the sph 5048p so you get a warranty card as far as all-in-one inverters for 48 volt systems, this is one of the cheapest options out there that also has really good reviews. You can get slightly cheaper ones, but then you risk getting a bad quality unit that may not have as many features as this one has. I've been using this Sun Gold 12 volt low frequency inverter for years now, and this thing's never given me any issues. This has no solar input, but it is an AC charger as well, and it can do 3000 watts. So I'm very excited to try out one of their 48 volt inverters. Hopefully it's as good and robust as my 12 volt one has been. All right, here's the side of the unit. You get a little dust screen here that you can keep clean and that'll help keep dust out of the unit. You get the product label right here that gives you more specs. Back of the unit, nothing crazy there. These are gonna be the holes which you're gonna hang it from the wall or whatever. Here's the other side of the unit. You get another dust screen for intake. You get the on off switch right here, which is just a breaker. So pretty nice. Overall, the color scheme looks really nice with this light blue and this white. It contrasts very nicely. I know some people don't care about that, but I do like that a lot. So compare that to something like the EG4 6000 XP. Really the only difference between that unit and this one is this one can take in a little bit more solar. It can do a thousand more watts and it's also split phase. So this can put out 240 volts. Like I mentioned before, this is only a 120 volt inverter, but that's perfectly fine for what I'm going to use it for. And honestly, for most people's situations, 120 volts will work just fine, especially if you're not trying to power any big appliances. And I just checked the manual. This is actually a parallel cable. So if you look right here, we have some parallel ports. You would use this cable along with the serial cable which is this guy right here if you wanted to put two of these in parallel. As far as airflow in the unit, it's gonna pull air from either side where we just saw where those screens were and it's gonna exhaust it out the bottom. It has nice grommets on all the holes, which is really nice. You don't have to go out and buy those. That is an extra cost that you would have to eat otherwise. So you got your AC line in from the grid, 120 volts. That's gonna be your line out. You're gonna be your PV input. Some other connections right here. I'm assuming the USB one lets you connect this to a computer to do updates and things like that. It also says Wi-Fi, so we're gonna have to figure out what that's about. And then right here is where your battery cables are gonna come in. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this cover off so we can take a better look at the terminals. I just went and read through the manual. So you can actually parallel these, and if you wanted to, you can configure them to get split phase output. So if you had two of these, you actually could configure them to get 240 volts of output. The Wi-Fi port, they basically sell a dongle that you have to buy separately, and that will allow you to have remote monitoring of the unit. So that is unfortunately something you have to buy separately. All right, so down here through this little hole, that's where your DC cables are gonna come into onto those terminals right there. And these are the bolts that you're gonna use for those terminals. So pretty nice. Right here is gonna be your AC in. So if you're live neutral and ground, your AC out, live neutral and ground, and then your PV input. You only have one PV input in this unit. It can do 5,500 watts of solar at 500 volts. Actually, I'm kind of curious. We're gonna pop the cover off too so we can kind of see the insides. All right, here we go. I got the cover loose. You want to very carefully lift this up because there is a connector for the screen. Here's the back of the screen. Got a ribbon cable running to that. And there we go. Looks like there's another little fan up there to help cool something off. In addition to the fans at the front, or at the bottom, I should say. Overall, it looks really nice. All the wires look really well loomed up and out of the way. This is more likely gonna be your inverter side of the unit with these heat sinks.
overall looks pretty good. I'm gonna get this thing mounted up to something so we can start testing it and I'm gonna show you guys how to make all the connections in order to use this thing properly. And we're also gonna kind of go through some of the menu items and see what the screen looks like and all that good stuff. In order to make all the connections to our inverter, for the output, I'm just gonna use this power strip. Now keep in mind, this is just for testing purposes, but later on, we're actually gonna build a load center with proper breakers and outlets to make the full use out of this inverter. But this will make it really easy just to connect for now. We have some MC4s for the solar input. That way we can hook up our solar to it. And I have a set of six gauge battery wires. However, SunGold recommends you use two gauge wiring. I would also recommend that as well, but six gauge work just fine just for testing and messing around with it. I also forgot to mention, I made a little pigtail right here. That's gonna allow us to be able to plug the unit into the grid and test out the AC charging function. And I used a 12 gauge extension cord to make the pigtail. It's also a good idea to put ferrules on these to keep the little individual strands of wire from poking out. This is all just for testing purposes, but do be careful if you're gonna do it like this. You don't create a short. Your live is gonna be the black wire and the neutral wire is gonna be the white wire. And make sure your connections are nice and snug for safety. I will say the terminal block right here feels really nice. I have a very secure tightening feeling when I'm tightening this. I don't feel like these are trying to twist. So that's really good because some of the cheaper units, you might experience that and it might feel kind of scary. Try to make tight connections because you're afraid to break something, but these feel really nice. All right, next is gonna be the AC out. And obviously PV input, negative and positive, pretty easy. Can't really mess that up. Actually, I just did negatives on this side. There we go, we got all our wiring hooked up, input, output, and solar. Next, we're gonna get our battery wires connected. Now these are pretty far in here, so in order to get the bolt on there, you're gonna need something kind of long to hold it or a magnet. All right guys, we got everything connected. Everything's hooked up, ready to go. When you go to put on your main power cable for so your battery input, you have to use a deep well socket with a magnet in it, or any socket with a magnet really would work, but I used this setup. And I was able to easily get in there and torque the bolts down because the bolts are recessed in there, so you do have to use something to kind of hold the bolt while you tighten it. And then make sure you torque these to spec, so that way you don't have a bad connection, because bad connections equals heat. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on so we can start messing with this thing. I went ahead and threw the inverter on a hand truck to be able to easily mount it up so we can do our testing. As far as batteries, we're going to be using this VAT rear 100 amp hour server rack battery. I'm actually doing a review video on this as we speak, and I figured this would be the perfect battery to go ahead and test our inverter. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick on the breaker for the battery. Next, you're gonna click on this breaker, and then the power switch for the inverter is right here. There we go, our battery has 69%. Nice. And there we go, the inverter just kicked on. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the manual and make sure I have this thing set for the correct battery type. I'm not using any battery communication. I never do on any of my setups. So we're not gonna worry about any sort of communication. We're just gonna set it to normal 40 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries. Make sure the cutoff is set correctly and the high voltage cutoff is set correctly. And that's it, we're gonna be able to start using this thing. And in the manual kind of toward the back is where you're gonna have all your different settings. So it's gonna tell you a number and what the parameter is and that's how you set everything up. So like I said, we're mainly gonna focus on the battery type, just make sure that's okay, and then we can start using this thing. And according to this, out of the box, the inverter is gonna be set for gel battery mode, and gel battery is gonna keep the voltage of 56.8 for floating and a charge voltage of 55.2. So what we're gonna do is set it to the next setting, which is LFP. I'm not sure how good this is gonna turn up. The screen is pretty dim. I do wish the screen was a little brighter. Oh, there we go, it shows up a little better if I turn the lights off. So we're gonna go ahead and click through the menu, and we're gonna to go to item number eight. And then we're gonna click the check mark and we're gonna change this to LFP16, hit enter, and that's it. And then we gotta get back out of the menu by pressing the little gear, there we go. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put some solar input. So I have this MC4 extension harness, we're gonna plug it into here and I'm actually gonna connect it to the main 10 panel array that runs my other 48 volt solar power system. There's not a whole lot of sun coming in right now because it's almost dark, but we're gonna see what we can get out of it. And as you can see with the solar connected, we're reading 350 volts. Just stick to the max of 500 volts and you'll be a-okay. And you can actually use the arrows while you're on the home screen. Sorry guys, I know there's glare on this. I'm trying my best. So you can actually use the little arrows here and actually cycle through and it tells you watts, amps, and all that good stuff. Kilowatt hours. So we're only making 0.2 amps or not even 100 watts. The sun's down right now, so there's really not much we can do about that. But in a future video, we'll hook it up in a nice sunny day and see that working. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna connect mains to it. So I'm gonna disconnect the solar panels. We're gonna connect mains current to it. Right now, the mains current is set to, is 40 amps. All right, I got my extension cord. We're gonna go ahead and plug it into my little wall outlet. It shows 120 volts and there it goes. I start charging. I wonder how much current it's gonna pull. 
And there we go. We actually have it connected to my other inverter. That thing is screaming now because we're putting 2,700 watts into the battery. And there you have it, almost 40 amps. So that's working perfect. Next, we're gonna check the idle consumption of the inverter. So the inverter is running right now. It is in invert mode. We have no solar coming in. It is not connected to the grid, just the battery. We have the indicator light on on the power strip, so we are making electricity, but nothing's plugged in. Here we are on the Vatra app, so we can see what the server rack battery shunt is reading, and it looks like 64 watts. This isn't gonna be a max output test, but we're gonna put a 1500 watt load on it. It should handle this obviously no problem, but I don't have enough output wired to really connect anything crazy. But just for now, just to show it does work, got a little heater. I will say the fans are really quiet on this, but the real test is gonna be when we put a bunch of solar because normally when the solar charge controller is ramping up, the fans are quite loud on most inverters. And there you go, guys. The display may be a little bit dim, but it's actually really nice once you turn the lights off and it shows we're using 1.4 kilowatts. It also has a little load bar right here that shows you zero to 100% as far as your load. So you can kind of keep a good eye on that. It tells you how many amps you're using on the DC side as well as the AC side. It tells you how many kilowatt hours you use. I guess it accumulates all that, so that's really nice. And if you're curious what the battery amperage looks like on the Vature BMS app, we are using 28, 27 amps. 28 amps. Guys, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really just wanted to do a good overview of this inverter and I'm really excited that I finally got my hands on one of these. I have a bunch of projects planned for this inverter. So definitely stick around if that's something you're interested in. If there's anything specific that you guys wanna see me do with this inverter, make sure you leave all your comments in the comments and questions and all that good stuff. And if you're using this inverter, let me know what kind of luck you guys are having with it. Apparently these units are pretty stout. So I'm super excited to see how long-term this thing holds up. That's gonna do it guys. Thank you all so much for watching.